In this video I'm going to build a 12 volt portable solar power system. It will be a premium build that will include Bluetooth. It will be used for camping, uh, also I will use it in my car with the inverter and uh, roughly off-grid usage. This is the first version where I already had a box and I also had three calcium batteries. I will call this build a premium build because I use Victron components and they have Bluetooth capability and also that this build can handle up to 500 watts of solar. I will use a Dometic cool freeze fridge, a laptop, an Xbox and I want to be able to charge a couple of phones. Also I will be extremely happy if it can handle a coffee capsule machine. So some more data, I will use it roughly four to five hours per day and I measured the components and they take up around 12 to 14 amps. Let's look at some of the components used in this build. Here you can see the inverter. It's a 2000 watt inverter for a 12 volt system. The reason I went for the 2000 watt is because I wanted to be able to handle my coffee machine. It has a remote on a cable and this is the European version. You can find the build list for the major components in the description below. Also there you will have links to a detailed list on my website and more information there. Here you can see the solar charger. It's an MPPT solar charger from Victron. It can handle 150 volts and 35 amps coming from the solar panels. Some of the components for this build I already had. One of them is the black plastic toolbox. Also, I already have three batteries for 12 volts and 72 amp hours each. I'm gonna connect them in parallel to get a total of 216 amp hours. I'm thinking of placing the inverter in the bottom of this box. Also, I'm gonna place the solar charge controller on top of the inverter. Behind all the components here, you can see the solar panels. I have two of those solar panels and they are 150 watts each and can handle up to 24 volts. When you have chosen a box to place your components inside, you need to figure out where things are going to go inside the box. Here, I'm trying to figure out where to place the remote for the inverter. This is the smart shunt from Victron. This unit can handle up to 500 amps. It measures the amps going through it. It is a Bluetooth enabled device. That means that you can download an app on your phone and you can monitor the amps and voltage readings, etc. on your app on your phone. This is a temperature monitor that will be placed on one of your batteries. It is Bluetooth enabled and therefore it will be paired with the solar charge controller. So in this way, the solar charge controller will get the temperature readings from the temperature monitor. This is the battery protect unit from Victron. It's a 65 amp unit and it's Bluetooth enabled. And the load connected to this unit can be put on or off through the app. It is not used for handling an inverter load through this unit. That will destroy this unit. Here you can see the 12 volt outlet and the 12 volt USB outlet that I'm going to place on the box. Also, I'm going to use these battery connectors. In the background, you also can see the fan that I'm going to use. Let's start this build. I'm going to place the inverter in the bottom of the box. This is to be able to maximize the airflow running through the box because the inverter has two of its own fans that will power up in case the inverter gets really, really hot. Also, I'm going to use this black rubber mat just in the fitting phase. I'm thinking of placing the solar charge controller in to on top of the inverter. And as you can see on the back side of the solar charge controller, you have some black cooling fins. Also, you can see the handle on the black box that it sticks down a little bit. So I need to be careful and place the solar charge controller so I can close the box. So I've told my kids to let me know if I stick my nose into the picture. <laughs> so I'm gonna mount a 12 volt fan on each side of the short side of the box. You need to look at the inverter fans so you don't make your fans go in opposite way of the inverter fans. Take something with a sharp edge. Here I use a small screwdriver. 
mark out the round hole for the fan blades to push air in or out of the box. Then I pre-drill four holes. This is so I can cut the hole for the fan. Next step, I mounted the inverter to the box bottom. I drilled four holes and I used the rubber feet for the inverter. I use a plastic sheet to mount all the smaller components. Here I test out the layout. I will have the incoming 12 volt from the battery in the upper left corner. Incoming negative 12 volt in the upper right corner. So place all components and look how to put the cables to minimize the cable length. Fix all components either to the plastic sheet or the, to the side of the box so they don't rattle around when carrying the box later. The inverter remote will be on top and mounted on the top of the box. I have connected the inverter cables. This is to see how the cables will run. The Victron Smart Protect will only be connected to the 12 volt outlets and not the inverter. The 12 volt outlets will go on the bottom left side because they need more room behind them. In the middle of the box I mount the AC outlet. This was the best place on this box. This is because there were no more room inside of the box, so I couldn't mount the flush AC outlet. Next I drill holes on each side for the solar cables running from the solar charger to the solar panels. Then I mount the MC4 cables to the solar charger. I already had an AC to DC charger and I mount the charge cable for this AC to DC charger on the left side here. So I finished the build and it's a little bit messy with the cables because this is the first time I assemble everything and I want to test everything out and maybe to adjust things and move them around in the box later. Here I have it all connected. I have set up the Victron VE bus that connects all Victron parts so they can share information with each other. Here I connect to the Victron Smart Shunt. You can see that it reads 100% but it's not accurate because it's not calibrated yet. Here I go into the Victron Smart Protect. I've connected the 12 volt fan and the 12 volt outlets in this case for the Victron Smart Protect. I want dust covers for the fans to protect the inside of the box. The first dust cover you see here was a little weak, so the fan blades comes into contact with the dust cover. I've uh, acquired a more sturdy one uh, that I will mount under this one to get double the protection. There's always a lot of crap flying around in the beginning of the summer and it tends always to get inside the box. Here on the bottom left you can see the circuit breaker. The circuit breaker should be sized according to the amps that the cables can handle so you don't burn the, your cables. Also it is wise to have the circuit breaker sized according to the batteries so you don't destroy them too fast. After the circuit breaker you can see the low voltage cutoff relay. The cutoff relay will be connected to the low voltage temperature board lying on the table. Also, I've connected the temperature sensor here for the fans. Everything here is connected and working. I will upgrade this build going forward and I will move the components to a bigger box. The main box I think is a little small. Either I will buy a bigger box just for the components and still use the batteries as in the picture. Or I will buy a bigger box to include the components and the battery. And then I would really like to upgrade to lithium batteries just to save weight and that lithium batteries have a higher lifespan. Here you can see the batteries. I use three calcium calcium lead acid batteries. The reason I use this one is that they have a high discharge rate and I also can use them for my belt. These batteries are quite heavy so I had to use a dolly to transport them. This box on the other hand is not so heavy. Even my kids can lift this box. 
Here I will show you some of the main components and the 12 volt route in the box. The 12 volt comes in here and goes to the first circuit breaker for 200 amp. The MPP3 solar charger is bypassed by the relay so it can still charge the batteries even if the relay cut. The relay is only cutting the inverter when the voltage drops too much. The relay is also connected to the Victron Smart Protect and the Victron Smart Protect also bypasses the relay. The Victron Smart Protect only gives 12 volt to the 12 volt outlets and to the fans and also to the fan controller board. You can see one fan on each side here. On top of the box we have the remote for the inverter. I think it's really handy to have it on top of the box here. It's easy to reach. You can turn the inverter on and off. Also, when the inverter is on, you can see the battery level and an approximate for how much use there is left in the batteries. The solar panels are 150 watt and 24 volt each. That gives 300 watts and 48 volts in total that is going to the MPPT. When the panels are connected in series, it makes them more sensitive for shade. I have mounted four hinges on the solar panel to be able to attach it to my car roof. This is one benefit of fixed panels that they can be mounted on a car or an RV roof and also charge while driving. Here is the MPPT charge controller from Victron. It's currently receiving 235 watts from the solar panels. I've connected to the solar charge controller by PC and a USB and a special USB cable. Since I've connected the solar panels in series, I have roughly 46 volts, but of course it's changing all the time depending on the sun. The voltage going into the batteries is roughly 14.9 volts, and the current is roughly 15 amps charging the batteries. Here you can see the readings from the chunt. I have connected the USB cable from the chunt directly to the PC and started the Victron app for PC. Right now it's pushing around 12 to 15 amps and that's my normal load. I've connected my laptop, a couple of monitors and also Dometic freeze fridge. Right now I have turned the solar panels upside down so they don't help. Also I have only one battery connected at this moment. Let's turn the solar panels up on the right side again and let's see what happens. As you can see the solar panels immediately take down the current and if there is enough sun, they will also start to charge the battery. So, here are some final thoughts on this build. Overall, I'm really, really happy and satisfied about this build. We have been out camping for a full week and it was doing us really good. For two days, it was raining and we couldn't charge at the rate that we wanted to charge it since there was no sun. So we had to cut back a little bit on the usage. But overall, the fridge was working the complete week. I could do one or two coffees. I didn't stretch it too much since it draws 120 amps. And this is because I sized the cables only for around 100 amps. So I should have doubled the cables to be able to handle the coffee machine. I call this, as I said in the beginning, a premium build. This is because it has Bluetooth, it has a quite big inverter, it has a good quality and fast MPPT, also with Bluetooth. I use a 12 volt relay to be able to turn off the inverter and I have the Victron Protect for the 12 volt side of the things. Also the Victron Protect is Bluetooth enabled. Some cons of this setup is that I would really like to have lithium batteries going forward to be able to handle a bit more load and don't wear the batteries as much. Also one thing I'm considering is if it's possible to cut the cost for this build and I don't think I would cut the cost on this build. I think I'm quite happy. I think I will just upgrade to a better box because it's a little bit small as mentioned and I will uh, upgrade to lithium batteries and maybe some flexible or foldable solar panels going forward. Thanks for watching. Please use the affiliate links to support the channel so I can do more builds and more fun stuff going forward. Any feedback, leave them in the comments below and see you in the next one.